Saloni, hi, good to have you with us. How have you been? Uh, thank you so much for having me, Ashu. It's been uh, it's been nice. It's been raining in Mumbai. So. Uh, uh, this is this is an exciting season. This is an exciting session. Unfortunately, it's happening at the back of uh, you know COVID, which is which has been a you know uh, a very dramatic uh, event, right? Uh, for each of us at a personal level and at a professional level. But I think here we're you know uh, what what I'm particularly excited about is is essentially the business side of uh, you know how businesses have been affected by COVID, right? And I think in general. Uh, it's been extremely positive, right? Transformation is something which has led the path. I think all of us within the startup ecosystem continue to, uh, uh, you know, talk of the cause, right? Uh, but I think adoption has become very real. You particularly, uh, you know, focus on gaming, right? Uh, which I consider a very important and a critical subset of entertainment, right? And I think that's something which has taken a very different shape and a very serious shape, right? Um, and and there is a different kind of excitement as money which is pouring in. So I think this conversation becomes very exciting at the, uh, you know, given all of this of, of what is happening, right? It just becomes a very important conversation. Yeah, no, and you know, when you talk about the pandemic, uh, in fact, gaming as an industry really exploded. So, you know, India already had some of the early markers that one would think that would make, you know, it's a perfect storm for gaming to take right. off. You know, you had uh, dirt cheap data rates, you have the last, second largest or the largest smartphone market, you have first time smartphone right. users who are locked in, who don't have much to do, and who are now embracing gaming for the very first time. So actually in Q, Q1 or Q2 last year, uh, data consumption on gaming exploded by 30 to 50%. Downloads, right. engagement on social gaming and certain platforms actually exploded like fifty to seventy percent. So, right. in fact, game usage it it was it was a very transformational event of gaming in in India last year alone. Indians consumed about ten billion gaming apps. Wow. Indians now game seven hours a week, which is very close to the global average. Right, sixty seven percent of India's millennials are gamers. So there is this been massive cultural shift where gaming is no longer just a subset of entertainment. In fact, it is right. a primary source of entertainment. Right. No, interesting. So let me, uh, you know, I am, while of course, I'm looking forward to discussing all of what you mentioned about, right? Uh, all, all, you know, the demographic dividends, right? And the engagements and, you know, how all of this has kind of changed and especially specifically in the last one, one and a half years, right? But what I'm also, uh, you know, particularly excited to discuss about is Bharat, right? Uh, and, I, and we will come to that through the course of our conversation, right? But before we do all of that, I'd love you to give us a quick round of introduction, right? I mean, you've been there. Uh, tell us a little more about that. And uh, yeah, and from there, we take it forward on the, you know, on the fund, on the thesis of the fund, uh, and so many other aspects that are very critical to this discussion. Today. Sure. I'm um, sure. So, you know, I've, I've had a 15-year-long uh, career. I've been a VC investor and an entrepreneur and M&A banker in the, in the new media tech and, and gaming and interactive space. Right. I've been fortunate to see businesses from different vantage points. So whether it's seed, it's growth, it's IPOs. So it's, it's been a really interesting ride. Right. I'm currently general partner at Lumikai. We're India's first and only a sector-focused interactive media fund. Prior to this, I was with a fund called London Venture Partners, which was one of the pioneering seed stage interactive media funds, uh, which right. were investing in Europe and North America. Before that, I was um, a co-founder and actually built a business, a mobile gaming business, building these very immersive social world games based on narrative with AI characters, but with right. a focus on female audiences. And we did a bunch of cool stuff on that. It was a great team, bunch of interesting partnerships, uh, was a jury member at the BAFTA Games Award and right. uh, you know, a fantastic uh, enriching learning, uh, learning experience. And prior to that, lived a very different life. It was a totally different experience. I was an investment banker and I was in private equity. I was with Morgan Stanley doing m and right. I left my banking career as vice president of the global CEO office at Barclays. I was six to seven years, built a very strong foundation in finance and private equity, right. uh, delivered $10 billion in m and transactions. So, you know, circle back, I guess, to 2020 is when we launched Lumikai. We are backed by some of the world's largest, most iconic, global strategics from the media and gaming industry. Right. Um, we've now seen over 700 deals. We've done six deals. We've announced five in a mix right. of content and platform plays. And uh, it's uh, it's been an incredible journey so far. Wow, that's a lot of information, but thank you so much. I think, I think uh, you know, in, in, I think that just makes our conversation just so much more uh, you know, sharper, right? Because, you know, I mean, I mean, with the kind of work that you've done in the financial sector, right? I think I'd love to sort of pick your, uh, you know, brains on some of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the pieces that are kind of uh, playing out, right? And especially the intersections, right? Uh, and valuations, I think, which becoming, 
um, you know, in in the kind of liquidity that we've been seeing, right? It's it's absolutely overwhelming to an extent, and also to an you know, when you start to seeing it as a business, right? Also seems like an aberration, right? Uh, I think while of course all of us are celebrating a lot of that, one fears that this is going to sustain, right? But uh, you know, before we do all of that, right? Uh, Lumikai, you know, you gave us a brilliant listing, right? But why gaming, right? Uh, and tell me a little more about it. I mean, are you an inward facing fund? Are you an, you know, a fund yeah. which is looking at Asia opportunities, global opportunities? What's the construct of the fund? The size of the fund? Uh, what's the thesis of the fund? A little bit of that. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, you know, gaming as an asset class is, is quite misunderstood. Uh, gaming as an asset class is now bigger than music, film, and television combined globally. Right. It's about a $300 billion industry and it's growing at double digit caggers. Right. In India in itself, this market has been growing very, very fast. And now gaming is a very specialized and a very complex asset class because it has depth and it has breadth. Right. Uh, because when we look at gaming, people often think about the games that you play, like a Candy Crush or a Temple Run or a PUBG, right? But right. within gaming, it's, uh, it, as I said, there's a lot of depth. So you've got content, which is just games content that you play on. Right. But then there is a medium of the content, which is a mobile game or a PC game, which are built very differently. Or for example, games like instant, uh, for instant messenger platforms, again, right. very deep economies and very deep uh, content genres. Within right. genres, there are fur further slices. There is core gaming, there is mm -hmm. mid core gaming, and then there is casual gaming and there's hyper casual gaming. So there's right. further depth. And, and all of these are billion dollar industries growing very fast all in itself. Right. Then you've got platforms. You've got platforms like game streaming platforms or social gaming platforms. You've got infrastructure. Infrastructure can be game engines, which can be a game engine like a Unity or an Unreal. Um, and then you've got tools and tech, which is the entire tools, tech, infrastructure around it. And of right. course, there's Frontier, right? Like there's crypto, social gaming, there's play to earn, there's NFTs, there's the metaverse, there's esports. So if you now look at gaming as an, right. as an asset class, I think your next question should be, why is everybody not focusing on gaming? Because that is the future. <laughs> In the, in the next decade, uh, prediction is that the most valuable companies in the world will be gaming companies. You know, it's right. going to be an Epic or a Niantic. No, sure. I mean, I, I kind of, I, I understand where you're coming from, right? And I'm not, uh, I think, you know, when you're talking about an inward facing, uh, or, you know, when you're looking at solving for India, right? I think that there's just too many problems, right? So I can't necessarily, you know, uh, uh, you know, I think, I think it'll be unfair if I, I believe that everybody should be jumping onto gaming, right? So I think yeah. it requires a certain specialization. But I think also the fact it requires the economy to be at a certain level, right? Typically, when you have more disposables and more, it's a more developed economy concept, right? But I think one significant shift that I think is very important when you talk of gaming, right, is that the families are getting smaller, right? Uh, and I think uh, I think gaming is in a certain way going to fill in that uh, that space, right? Uh, it's going to become a constant, right? Uh, in in in, for example, children growing up and and so on and so forth. I think those are those are certain nuances which I think are very interesting about gaming, right? Uh, so, uh, while of course I'd love to discuss your portfolio, and I'll come down to that, right? I'd love to understand what is the stage and preference that you have, right? When you're looking at investing yeah. in, in these companies, right? And India is a, is a fairly nascent market, right? Uh, yeah. Tell me a little more about, you know, what's what's happening on the India market, um, and and like I said, you know, what what is the stage and preference that you have when you are entering those? Yeah, so uh, the stage at which we, we invest very early, so we're typically the first institution in. So that's pre-seed, seed stage essentially is the uh, space that we like to operate in. And in terms of sector focus, the way we look at the sector is obviously broad, broader. So we look at the entire ecosystem around it. And then even within that, we look at any industry which can be disrupted by say interactive, immersive touch points. Now, if you look at any consumer facing experience that is now popular, these are all right applied game mechanics in disguise. Right. You know, your Instagram, your Facebook, what they work with is dopamine right. hits, right? These are all applied game mechanics. We grew up playing those games. We've seen instant messaging. We've seen leaderboards. We've seen chats. All of right. this existed in gaming in the, in the 18 and 90s and all consumer facing experiences now applied that. So all of right. that comes within our pieces. And we're obviously India focused. Now, when you said that, you know, is it a function of developing uh, countries? Gaming is a function of developing countries. I don't necessarily agree with that. It's a function of medium and platform. Uh, India, for the very first time, it has been a perfect storm, right? Game adoption, game usage, infrastructure, and monetization and payments has converged in a way that has never happened before. You know, the pandemic accelerated a digital revolution, which would have ordinarily taken four or five years. Right. Payment infrastructure now, you know, in, the, in last year, in 2020, 40% of total transaction volume uh, was done digitally in India, right? So all of that has happened. India now topped the charts in real-time payment transactions at 25 billion, leaving aside China, which was at 15 billion, right? right? 
so there has been just this massive shift um, which has taken place which mm-hmm. has also meant that a lot of people who have come on to playing gaming because earlier gaming was pc and console which were very expensive sports right but that's not true with mobile mobile dom- democratized access so indian jumped the pc and the arcade uh, and the console stage right uh, other western markets had very li- linear trajectories in india that's not been the case indians adopted gaming social media chat audio video all at the very first all at the same time and all for the very first time so their digital sociology is very different from that of a western uh western player so yeah. the products and entertainment that you build for this digitally mobile first native market is very different from that of the west right. and the monetization which they display is also going to be very different from that of the west very interesting but sorry which are which are the categories uh, within the gaming domain right which are which are the best performing right uh, and at a distance is very difficult to understand right uh, yeah. but i mean given that you are you are in it right and and i think you you kind of looking at those trends day in day out right what's uh happening right which are the categories which are uh, outperformer and you know you've been surprised right uh, in terms of you know how they've been picked up I mean, you've been in the market long enough right uh, which are the categories that you've been surprised uh, by uh, right and i it also love to understand the regionality right because i mean india is is a market which operates at many layers right yeah uh, bharat is something that i think every vc should be talking about right yeah. uh, and the possibility of bharat unfortunately bharat has its own complexities right uh, yeah. we're a fairly divided lot we have a package of you know traditions right uh, good and bad uh and i think that just adds to the complexity but you know uh i'd love to hear from you which are the categories and yeah. which have the ones which surprised you pleasantly yeah. yeah so look i mean india in every shape or form is is not one singular identity in terms of it's very difficult to do. It's, it is many right. se- separate Absolutely. identities and that one yeah. single identity which you paint indians with is probably incorrect right and if you trace the evolution of entertainment or mass market in india you know that there is a very globally savvy audience which replicates very much like the western audience but there is also this massive mass market uh, which is very different and all of these coexist so there are going to be players who are going to be playing all these minecrafts and roblox and fortnites of the world but there are also players who want who want ludo experiences or experiences with indian cultural touchstones etc and both right. both beautifully coexist but if you tell me like two years back that indians would be playing a mid core first person shooter game and spending items on in app purchases you know which are cosmetics uh i would it would and which was 1 gigabyte i would totally blow my mind and that's happened right. and that was you know pubg's uh in pubg's uh, entry into the market and which you know they hit about 40 50 million downloads and this is right. same market where you've got a ludo king which is doing very well which has about 50 million daily active users as well right and both are coexisting right and as we've seen in other markets where in in india particularly with entertainment you have tier 1 entertainment which is right. just speaking very westernized but there's also this massive mass market entertainment which exists right. uh, and which is in a different form and a different nature and regional uh, in regional or and vernacular in nature also coexists at the same time and that's la- that is the direction in which we believe india is going to also be headed in at least for gaming obviously we've seen the rise of real money gaming platforms emerge right. and even though there's a regulatory gray zone in it we mm-hmm. have seen for the very first time indians transact on digital platforms in for digital goods or for digital experiences or for competitive right. multiplayer social experiences and that's never been seen before and that's user psychology and user behavior that's very interesting now india as a market even if in terms of monetization you know everybody to complain indians don't pay indians don't spend okay. money right. uh, and we believe as a fund that the best time to invest in a sector is when it na- violates a certain narrative and this was a na- narrative violation people saying oh indians don't pay but actually that's not true because two years later in india the total gaming market is now being split into ads and what it's acri- acquiring from advertisements in app purchases which is now becoming a significant portion of right. total monetization and rmg across it so you know the the pie is expanding monetization is building with very very strong growth markers for the future but certainly it'll be interesting to understand you know what kind of monetization are we talking about and what percentage of of the engaged audiences for example uh, is is paying for all of this right yeah uh, would love to understand a little bit of that right i mean i've been i've been talking to a couple of people in the in the gaming space right um i think uh, you know beyond a 2 to 1/2% conversion is is absolutely uh, bizarre i think a lot of people tend, tend to celebrate that kind of an event right i mean of course there are aberrations right and i'm not going to take it away but uh, i think these are these are conversions i mean 
the numbers are still much smaller. I mean, we, we have a problem of size, right? I mean, anything that we land up doing, it translates into you know, a couple of million dollars, right? And, and that could be a flash in the pan, right? What's your sense of this? What do you make out of this? Yeah. So, you know, it really depends on genres and categories and, uh, and the kind of content that people are paying for. Uh, there are certain genres which monetize much better and those conversion rates are higher. There are certain genres right. which don't monetize as well, conversion sure. rates are low. Now, in terms of total market size, you'll have to watch the space. We're doing a research report, which we're going to be launching in the next couple of weeks. So that, mm -hmm. that'll answer your question. But right. the uh, early data that we are seeing is that, you know, we ran a primary research um, and we ran a sample size of, you know, various demographics across mm -hmm. the country. Significant portion of that user base is already uh, spending money on games. A significant, a, a meaningful portion of that uh, is actually spending money on behaviors like tipping and gifting. And we'll be right. releasing all these research reports in, in, uh, in the inner research report very soon in the next three, four weeks. And that, that should give you some real insight of how deep the market is. It's far deeper than any of us actually thought. Right. You know, I, 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 and we'll wait for the report, right, to be out and, and we'd, we'd possibly look to circle back, right, on, on discussing some of those aspects, right? Uh, so really, I have, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not essentially a quintessential gamer, gamer right? Um, nor am I the age, um, but you know, I have, uh, you know, I think one thing which has become very, very interesting is live streaming of gaming, right? Uh, I mean, you know, one tends to consume a lot of content because, you know, that, that essentially is what you do, right? That becomes a filler in the, in the gaps that you have in the day, right? Uh, yeah. live streaming has become, it's become, you know, fairly mainstream, right? It's coming, it's coming right in the middle of, of what you're doing, right? Yeah. And you, one tends to get, gets to. Uh, one gets hooked on to, uh, you know, watching those games, right? And my sense is, I think that is the case with many, many people who are out there, right? Who are not necessarily gamers, but land up watching these live streams, right? What has live stream done to uh, to increase, uh, uh, you know, this this uh, possible uh, pension to go out and play, right? That collaboration uh, in the game, right? What what do you make out of that? Yeah. I mean, is this is this has been has this been a very critical and a key enabler? Uh, and also uh, a hook for many people to come in and, and, and start playing, right? What do you make out of this, right? Yeah. And India, like like you kind of alluded to, right? Uh, we are a, a, a market which is flying on cheap data, right? Uh, do you think it's it's something which is which has changed the narrative of gaming? It's just made it so much more easier and relatable for people to you know look at, understand, enter, right? Is that is that? Uh, and what do you see? I mean, what's going to be way forward in that? Absolutely. And that's a great insight, right? I mean, we've made two bets in that space as well. Sure. And one of them is a game streaming is, is the India in, is India's leading game streaming platform called Loco. Right. And the kind of traction that we're seeing in it is, is, is incredible because it is right. now become an alternative form of entertainment. You know, right. these guys are at 3 million monthly actives. They're at, you know, at, they're hitting about half a million daily active users. They've got 27,000 right. game, game streamers and creators on their platform. And watch times are, 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 are north, of, north of an hour right. uh, for the most engaged users. And that's, that's just been, and this is, company has just been launched about nine, 10 months back. And it's just on this crazy growth trajectory right. at the moment. And these game streamers are now becoming celebrities slowly, right? You've got people who are recognizing right. them or, who are cheering for them, who are, you know, they're, they're, they're mini celebrities in their own right. And some of them right. are now rivaling the world's best. We've also done another um, another streaming platform and that's a little bit of a different, it is creator-led social gaming where the creators and hosts can come together and create games which then engage their audience right. and play with them. And it's a level of engagement uh, and immersivity which is, which is even next level because now you right. can participate and play with the influencer that you like. And incidentally, this is top, uh, the 80% of the top creators are women. Right. And 55% of their user base are women from largely tier two, tier three cities wow. in the country. And these guys have hit about a million downloads. They've got crazy retention metrics, very high uh, engagement metrics, already right. at half a million monthly actives. And their watch time is, and they've hit 100 million gameplays on their platform. Right. right? And so, and we've seen this, right? Where have we seen this in markets? We've seen this in markets like China. So we've seen the, you know, Huya and Douyu and Bing, right. and all of these markets, which, which spoke to this user base, which was spending a lot of time on their mobile devices. And they were engaging with these influencers and these creators and these games and game streaming as a way of not just, well, it's not just killing time, but it's also another meaningful part of entertainment. Oh, absolutely. And if you now do research, you will find that millennials are spending more time playing games than they are any other form of entertainment. Right. It, it exceeds music, it exceeds TV, it exceeds OTT. So 
this kind of experiences is is just it's it's far far greater and more immersive than anything that that uh, millennials have previously been introduced with and there's a level of agency and autonomy in this experience that other linear experiences do, have, cannot offer no no i completely i completely agree with you uh, on that point uh, saloni i think the kind of engagement i think that uh, i mean like I, i mentioned right i mean i mentioned about myself i'm not an active gamer right i'm not that category right but i mean I, i think once you get into it you get into it right and you're just hooked on right? you want to get out of there i can imagine for the people who are playing it um i think that community and that behavior and that engagement is just just it's becoming you know i mean that becomes an exit right so every single time or every every opportunity that you get i mean i can imagine that tendency to go back right so like and i completely kind of second you on that point uh so when i think we've discussed a lot about the macros i mean i want to continue discussing that and possibly pick up uh, up you know a few points right as we go along in the conversation but i'd love to understand a little more about your portfolio right you've done these six investments right you've looked at 700 of them uh right tell us a little more about it i mean uh, why are the numbers so difficult right given that this is a market which is about to take off Yeah, uh, I understand there are a lot of me too's that that come up and they come up much faster, right? Uh, also, the fact that you have to manage your portfolio in a complementary way. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little more about the portfolio, which yeah. where it exists. What are the number of deals that you're closing? What are some of the areas that you're looking forward towards, right? Uh, yeah. From from and you think are going to blow into being much larger uh, areas and are going to possibly have much higher engagement and yeah. and conversions. yeah so i think the the way we look at it from a lens is uh, there are a couple of lenses right if you sure. are an indian company building in india for the world then you need to mm-hmm. find a white space because gaming is incredibly competitive there are 10000 sure. games which are launched on the app store like every month right so how right. do you stand out from it and how do you how do you build because gaming uh, games businesses are as much an art as much as it is science right. so you need to have that skill that capability and that pedigree to be able to build those gaming experiences and also these are this business is it's a brutal business because you get feedback very immediately right right and, um, and so so that that's always very clear to us you know who are these founders are they building for the world and if they are building are they building interesting white spaces and we have a company called bombay play which is right. fantastic probably one of the best game design and tech teams in the country you know ex zinga ex blue mobile ex moon frog co-founders building this business uh, building hyper social games for a white space for an platform like instant messengers again which is you know very very new and right. these guys are profitable they're on a crazy run rate and they're just seeing massive growth and it this just been 8 months in and this is the beauty of a games business if you do it well it's incredibly profitable and the capital that they raise is largely then secondary right going on, going on for, uh, forward i think the second is and how a second lens that we apply is how do these businesses build for india but achieve market leadership mm-hmm. how do they have bold ambitious visions through right. that and you know we've done another content company which is a company called studio sira very young gen z founders ex nvidia ex georgia tech strong technical strong product right. skills who are building mid core india first games but with a wrapper of indian mythology and indian history and leveraging that story not just pasting indian characters it but actually natively building these gaming experiences which are really high quality world class experiences Right. for indian audiences with indian cultural touchstones right. and then we you know we've also backed uh, companies which are building for let's say mid core cricket titles right cricket's a religion in india but very few companies have been able to build cricket immersive experiences right. and, you know we've backed all star games and then we've seen loco and lolo which i've talked a little bit about which are on the portfolio uh, platform side and look the way we look at gaming is you know everybody says games is a hit driven business and well i tell them well so is venture capital so you need to build a portfolio right, right? and you need to mitigate that risk by building a portfolio right. so we are looking at infrastructure plays which could be let's say back end solutions or which could be much deeper integrations for gaming companies and then tools and tech so that's the way we look at it um i think we've been look initially actually when we launched the fund we were at, we we actually thought we'd see less deals than we did we mm-hmm. thought you know this is going to be a slow burn india is a nascent market you know we've just right. seen those inflection markers we were actually surprised we saw 700 deals in the last 10 months and uh, 11 months and uh, right. we were just swamped with the level of ambition and there's this gen z founder who is coming into this market who has a very inherent understanding of global high quality gaming experiences who wants to build that and then right. you've now got founders who are saying hey by the way if we apply game mechanics and if we use the best practices of retention and engagement we can disrupt existing industries whether it's finance whether it's crypto whether it's ed tech whether it's social commerce and you've got like this entire layer of interactivity which is coming up 
uh, right. which also is interesting for us to see because you know there, there's just a lot that gaming as an industry can teach other industries right, right. because nobody uh, can understands their user better than a gaming company right because the interesting. kind of I think analytics that's a, that's that you a, that's, do. that's an interesting highlight right uh, so in fact you walked me into my next question right and i was I mean, I mean, in fact, itching to ask you and, and discuss, uh, you know, the, the possibilities of intersections, right? And I think India, you know, I think we're seeing intersections come across uh, the board, right? I mean, if you talk about agriculture, I mean, agri fintech, for example, um, is 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 coming along, uh, coming alive, right? I mean, if you're talking about uh, education, again, you know, a variety of uh, permutation combinations are now coming. So I think I think India, you know, we we kind of evolved much faster, right? I think adoption is absolutely phenomenal, and we're looking at these intersections, right? Something that you kind of mentioned, right? What do you make out of that? Are you open to uh, investing in certain certain intersections that come up, right? Uh, which, of course, you know, utilize the gaming, say, for example, thesis, but are solving a very critical problem. Um, financial education, for example, right? I mean, I was I was in a conversation yesterday with somebody, and you know, we were talking about gamification of, for example, investing in stocks. Now, my, I mean, which is the easier side of it? Uh, the complexity is that as a fund, you're essentially geared to be investing in gaming companies, right? Uh, these intersections could be a little outside of, of what you're possibly doing, right? And I could be completely wrong with this, and you can possibly correct me. Uh, but because the matrix is changed, right? I mean, as soon as you, for example, talk of talk of stock markets, right? I mean, that is a very different kind of matrix that you're looking at. I mean, the thesis that you're applying is, of course, that of gaming. But I mean, uh, the numbers and the performance is is, is very very different, right? Uh, eventually, these these businesses are going to be valued uh, on the core matrices that they are. Uh, yeah. You know, building for right. What's your sense of yeah. this? I mean, is this something that you're open to? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Than... Uh, absolutely. I mean, this is very much part of the focus. In fact, the reason why we call it interactive is this reason, right? It's this: we are an interactive focus fund. Our expertise is essentially applied game mechanics across these uh, sectors which are di being disrupted. Now, if you say this is not a new phenomenon, this is not a phenomenon only in India. Robinhood right. is a great example of fintech plus applied game mechanics. Duolingo sure. is a great example of education plus gaming applied, right? right. And, uh, you know, these it, people think that, oh, just because you have a leaderboard or just because you have fan engagement, that means that's applied game mechanics. That's not true, actually. You know, game right. mechanics have to be immersive and they have to be built in to that experience. Game mechanics are also the way you retain a user, how you mm -hmm. measure that user, how you engage right. that user. And those nuances are incredibly important from a product perspective. You know, right. people will say, oh, we look at retention, which is, month one and month two retention. And we're actually telling them that's not the way to measure retention. You should be looking at D1, D7, D30. You should right. be looking at level one, level two, level 50 retention to sure. look at break down your user experience, look at first time user experiences. Mm -hmm. All of these nuances are something that, you know, gaming companies have done for eons, right? right? And even when you look at the kind of, let's say mechanics, and I hinted about upon this a little bit when I when we opened is, if you want to see what innovation looks like five years from now, see sure. what's happening in the gaming world right now. Right. right. No, I don't take it away. I don't take it away from the from the from the and, industry. And, and exactly, and you know, so when you see these mechanics, like for example, what is Cred doing? You know, you press, right. you log on to Cred, you spin the wheel, you get rewards. That's a game mechanic. Right. And implemented really well. So right. all of that fits into the intersection of what we call is you know gaming plus plus because immersive and interactivity is going to be driving few, the future because uh, kids are being brought up with the mobile devices on their hand. The only thing they know how to do, do is touch rather than type. But, you know, Saloni, I have a question. I mean, you kind of, you you mentioned a threat, right? I'm saying, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from, right? I mean, gamification is something which is very important. The intelligence and the understanding and the sensitivity around it uh, is very, very important with which you build games, right? But don't you think, I mean, when we talk of these intersections, right, I mean, there could be a possibility, for example, when you talk about financial markets, right, and you're kind of gamifying them, and that's just an interface, right? It could just, you know, take away the seriousness around the issue, right? I mean, here we're talking about savings, we're talking about growth in savings, we're talking about people's money, right, that they are kind of earning, if you could talk about education, right? For example, we're talking about concepts, right? I mean, it could be, it could be delivered in an interactive format, it could be delivered with a certain UI UX, right, uh, which could be, you know, more gaming form, right? But then the outcome is very different. I think those kind of matrices that you talk about are essentially horizontal matrices, which are, I think, common in every business, right? But do you think it, it's right and relevant and, and correct to cut it, cut every business just basis horizontal matrices, right? I mean, uh, these businesses could have completely different nuances that needs to be considered, right? Uh, when you're evaluating this business, right? That could be outside of your, say, core gaming playbook. Yeah. 
so you know it's not about just applying these mechanics it's about design principles sure. right and it's about building value propositions and experiences for users so you know mm -hmm. we've been you've been experienced game mechanics in uh, in in you know from the 1800s you had green right. stands and you had uh, you know this this there is we we've been part of this you know when you when you do your food shopping when you go to grocery stores the way things are laid out all of these are design principles right, right? and all of this is already inherent like when you're right. on an instagram uh, that's an applied game mechanic when you get a hit of a like and that you know something in your brain lights up that's like hitting a dopamine actually instagram and and facebook and linkedin all these uh, all these guys were passionate right. gamers and right. that's how you know they brought design principles into these experiences so it's mm -hmm. got nothing it doesn't take away or detract from the seriousness of it right. it just enhances a user experience and that's and that's very critical and that is Wait. always going to be there but you know that makes your job so much more difficult i mean i have i i i think i think with I, you're just not dealing with gaming i mean you're definitely dealing with everything which is being delivered in a gaming form right yeah. uh I, i hope you have a large enough team to you know help you survive all of this i mean it's a, it's a difficult environment to be in it, well it's not uh, i think the environment is is just the right Uh, time for us to be in because we're very fortunate that we get a ton of deal flow our way and you know you've got right. founders buying for uh, for us to be on the cap table so sure. um, you know we get we get references from other vcs from founders mm -hmm. from our network from portfolio and uh, in fact that's always been uh, i guess we've been surprised with the warm welcome that we've got, right. gotten because you know most people are very keen to have us on the cap table simply because right. of the experience and the expertise that we bring so we've sure. we've been very fortunate in that sense and obviously you know we're 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 young as a fund so we need to deliver to it as well and we're very fortunate that port the portfolio is now showing very early signs of strong traction and you know sure. we need to live up to that but to us it's that's been a luxury problem so to say it's not it's not a it's not <laughs> right. a problem of scarcity right interesting you know uh, sarani i mean i i can't have a conversation with uh, you know uh, somebody in the venture capital space or or investing space right and and not talking about valuation right i mean i think what we've been seeing right i mean uh, there's a global liquidity event which has happened right i think there's uh, I mean, and, and you know, India has been a has been a beneficiary in, in many many ways, right? And we're seeing the secondary markets, we're seeing the primary market valuation going through the roof, right? Um, I think at the time, you know, it couldn't have been better, right? Uh, I don't think we're gonna, um, uh, you know, see a time which is gonna be uh, similar. I think for a, for a very long time, right? I think as things start to start to normalize. And what do you make out of this, right? For an early stage fund, yeah. you know, uh, like I said, I mean, there is a when I mean, the valuation is going through the roof, right? What do you make out of this, right? Uh, uh, again i think that adds to the to a layer of complexity to your job right i mean uh, tell me a little more about how how difficult has this uh, made it for you to cut the checks right uh, because yeah. the expectations like i said has gone through the roof yeah so look i mean the first part is what you're seeing in the market right what you're seeing right now is years of monetary policy excess which is resulting in excess liquidity and of course all the turmoil right. in china is now diverting a lot of capital in sure. towards towards india but so this right. is also leading to a new type of capital entering the industry mm -hmm. because you know you've got a decrease in 10 year sovereign interest rates and you know there's a very high desire for uh, risky or high yield assets so sure. the good part is capital is free and risk capital is high and the con mm -hmm. is that companies which don't deserve to raise will raise money or companies right. which are being able to raise at high valuations may not be able to sustain or grow into those valuations right, right? and and we've seen these cycles i've been i've seen through three bull cycles and three bear runs in my life sure. and i don't think that will be the last so we've we've gone through this cycle right i think uh, the only way to stay in the cycle is to a stay disciplined is to right. stay stay focused uh, we're also seeing clearly the emergence of verticalization in venture capital to be able mm -hmm. to stand out right uh, alternate within alternative assets micro vcs and just or uh, verticalizations or sector specializations are fast emerging simply because the industries are changing so fast and so much dynamic and founders are getting smarter right Right. They, don't, they don't no longer just want money now they want strategic partners now they want right. help beyond capital they want that access to that network and i think that's something that uh, founders see very quickly with us because we know right. capital is only one of the problems that founders face they no want help in hiring they want help right. in attracting talent they want help in making in uh, introductions to downstream investors who are relevant to their sector they right. want uh, strategic publishers they want uh, eventually acquirers and all of that possible it only becomes possible if you understand the sector you're entrenched in that sector you're able to make 
uh, have insights and drive and catalyze these founders in a particular way, which most other probably gen generalist uh, sure. VCs are great at the downstream stage, but at the super early stage, they still lean on, on funds like us. So I feel there'll always be room for that. Um, you know, the environment that we work in is, is collaborative in the sense that there's so many downstream investors now, there's so much avenue for right. companies to raise capital that, mm -hmm. uh, that especially now for Indian companies who want to go global, that opportunity is is has never been better. No, but don't you think this is this is an aberration? I mean, I mean, you know, at some point of time, this is going to settle settle down, right? We're not going to have the kind of liquidity that we've seen in last, say, about no. a year and a half, right? I mean, this is going to normalize, right? I think one interest rate movement, and I think I think the money is going to back be back into developed nations, right? And in any case, you know, I mean, there's a regional, um, uh, you know, complexity which is kind of emerging, right? And that is making I think everyone is ecosystem iffy, right? So it's just a matter of time before this happens. I mean, we've seen a small meltdown, right? That happened, right? I think China fears are out there, yeah. uh, which would possibly pull everything down, right? Don't you think, I mean, I understand where the, where the liquidity is sort of coming from, right? But don't you think it has to be somebody who's to stand out saying that, listen, you've got to build your business on right uh, fundamentals, right? I mean, you have to keep your costs in check, right? I mean, look at, for example, I mean, I've been talking to many, many founders, right? I think one of the biggest problems that has become uh, for them is, is the, uh, the bizarre expectation of resources, right? I mean, hiring resources has become uh, hugely yeah. expensive, right? So a lot of money, for example, which is being raised is actually going into, uh, you know, hiring uh, resources at a, at, a, at a much higher price, right? Incentivizing them in a, in a very, very, uh, uh, you know, from their industry standard, possibly what they're getting, right? Uh, maybe a 2x of that. Now, what is happening is that, you know, there is a bubble that is getting created. I mean, what do you read out of this? I mean, this is not sustainable. One bad patch, right? Six months, eight months, one negative movement, right? All of this is going to fall apart. So, you know, what you alluded to, which is of downstream investors, a lot of these investors might just become iffy, right? And that could leave early stage funds like yourself in a, uh, a tricky zone, right? Uh, yeah. How do you read that? Yeah, so look, I mean, uh, you know, I 100% agree with you. There's a lot of, I guess, liquidity, which is, you know, these are, these are tourists. I like to say, you know, tourists sure. who come who are shopping and, you know, pick up assets. And that's why building relationships with the right downstream investors is very important. Mm -hmm. As a fund, we have a lot of strategic capital, which backs us, which are, you know, large multi-billion dollar invest uh, right. strategics who are here to play the long game. So for us, sure. uh, we don't look at it as this ephemeral cap capital. We're, we're here and we're patient capital. Now, right. gaming and the sector that we operate in is counter cyclical. Mm -hmm. Right. So typically in crisis that we've seen actually gaming usage, and we've seen that in the pandemic as well, gaming usage and gaming consumption actually increases, game spending increases. And historically, 93% of exits in gaming occur via m and Right. So, and uh, you are now looking at, there's a crash crop of cash rich buyers who've done exceedingly well in the last years right. was sitting on massive war chests, which means that the range of 200, you know, the, the range of let's say 300 to $5 billion acquisition outcomes are much more likely. And those are increasingly to the benefit of early stage investors. And those are only possible if you have relationships with those downstream investors, you have relationships with those downstream acquirers. So right. in a sense, the sector that we operate in insulates us from this reality, but that's not to be said if there's a rush out of capital right. that won't be impacted. But in a sense, historically, that this sector has been counter cyclical. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, that, that is just the nature of the business that it is. Interesting. You know, uh, sorry, we're towards the end of the conversation, right? But I can't have a conversation that I don't talk of COVID, right? And, and you know, what COVID has done. And I would want to merge in the, the monetization side of it uh, in this, uh, in, in this particular question, right? Uh, now, what is, what COVID has done is that, you know, it kind of locked us up, right? All of us, you know, irrespective of wherever we are, you're in Bombay, I'm in Delhi, uh, somebody in Bangalore, right? Uh, but also Kanpur, Indore, uh, Mysore, and, you know, tier two cities are essentially behaving like tier A markets, right? Uh, and like I said, I mean, everybody was exposed to the same ecosystem of content, right? Uh, and everybody is watching whatnot, right? Uh, there are a lot of people who are looking at domestic content. There are a lot of people who are looking at international content. I mean, you can kind of cut it across age categories. Yeah. Now, what that has done is that it's brought in a very different kind of an aspiration, uh, right? Uh, irrespective of whatever saving space, right, uh, that we have. And that's a depleting saving space that we have, right? Uh, and, and I think that's a conversation we can go on, on doing that, right? But what I want to essentially ask is that, you know, while there's aspiration, right? Uh, how is that leading into monetization in tier two and tier three? That's number one. Number two is, uh, and this is something which, which you know, we are, we're kind of, we've been, we've been talking about many, many founders, especially in D2C areas, uh, and D2C as a sector, right? Uh, and of course, other consumer uh, facing ecosystems is that, 
you know, uh, product life cycles that were say three years, four years, five years, six years, right, are now going to essentially just come down to 15 months, 18 months, 20 months, right? They're going to be extremely or far more dynamic, right? Like I said, because, you know, we've gotten used to consuming so much more content, right? Uh, our hunger is going to be so much more higher, right? I mean, I, and I don't see the rates of, for example, data kind of changing drastically, right? Uh, and that essentially means, like I said, I mean, and people are going to require a lot more flavor, right? Don't you think all of this coming together and monetization still picking up, right? Uh, I think, uh, you know, path to sustainability in gaming could take a little more time. What's your sense of it? What do you make out of this? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I think that's a great point. I mean, look, uh, we've, we've tracked inflection markers in other markets, right? We've right. seen yeah, the we've seen the China market and we've seen the Turkey market. Now, the China market, you know, very similarly in 2004, 70% uh, of China's revenue used to come from foreign-owned titles and people used to say, oh, Chinese will never spe uh, won't right. spend on games because, oh, they only buy pirated games. Right. In three years, 80% uh, of the revenues was coming from the domestic gaming market sure. in three years. And, you know, what the markers that changed were a bunch of things. One is smartphone mm -hmm. usage, is smartphone 3G proliferation, right. payments changed. So prior to 2007, less than 20% of uh, transactions happened via credit cards or through digital payment infrastructures, China was also a cash economy, very much like India. Right. Um, the, there was a big push for made in China. So the Chinese mm -hmm. uh, youth party started to push games as a way of spreading patriotism and nationalism and a lo lot, right. lot about you know, make, make in China and sure. for China. Very similar to what we're seeing with Atmanirbhar Bharat and you know, make games and make right. products for the India market. Right. The Indian government is now setting up a sector of excellence for gaming and interactive at, at IIT Bombay. We've seen a lot of China also, you know, 2006, 2007, three gaming companies went public. In right. India, Nazara Games went public this year. You've had sure. three major acquisitions, uh, including a half a billion dollar acquisition by MTG Games, a pretty simple base out of Bangalore. Right. Uh, you've seen $1.8 billion, $2 billion being invested in the gaming market in the last 24 months. So, you know, a lot of those inflection markers are coming in, that user okay. behavior is coming in, monetization is clearly upticking, the market has grown 30% in the last right. year and year, and we'll be able to share more once the research is out. But tier two, tier three monetization is incredibly strong for in-app purchases, and we're, we're seeing that uptick. Uh, just the business, I mean, you know, Dream11 just posted at quarter results, it's daily fantasy games. These guys made $250 million last year. Right. right. And it's it's profitable with the free cash flow of about $30 million or so. So, you know, everybody said Indians will not monetize, Indians will not spend money, but also people said India will never see liquidity events. And we just had Freshworks go for an IPO this, this year. You know, you've got right. some blockbuster IPOs come this month. So this, you know, these kind of inflection markers, once they happen, then it's, you know, these once in a lifetime events with the, you know, you kind of see then the ripple effect. Right. Changes. And then, you know, three years later, we'll be we'll wonder why we ask these questions at all. Right. So, you know, I, I think it's only a matter of time and uh, it's it's the golden age of interactive and, and gaming in, in our mind. You know, certainly how I want this conversation to go on, right? I mean, I have many, many more questions. I mean, I, I would have loved to discuss, uh, you know, coins, tokens. I think that's that's the new yeah, currency. Yeah. And I think I think games is going to enable that in a big way. But listen, I'm going to, I'm going to reserve a lot of that for our next conversation, uh, right? Uh, you know, in line with our, our time, right? Uh, I'd love to understand what are the next two years like. I mean, I would have loved to ask you a five-year question, but I think we're just in two dynamic times, right? So I would rather squeeze it to a two-year period. Uh, mm -hmm. That also gets me an opportunity to come back to you, say, much earlier, right? And talk of some of the changes that we anticipate are going to happen, right? Uh, and, and sooner than later, right? What are the next two years like, right? What what is uh, What do you think are going to be some very, very interesting events uh, that could possibly change, uh, you know, the, the, the adoption in gaming and, you know, and monetization like i said right i mean this is the, this is this is something which takes its own time right i mean you really yeah. can't push it down somebody's throat right i'd say yeah. it's, it's a function of many many things that happened right yeah. uh but i think there is this positivity which is there right uh, yeah. what are the next two years like uh the next two years will definitely involve a few gaming companies going public or via ipo or maybe spac uh it will involve the rise of category leading content india first content gaming companies and uh, the rising platformization of the internet economy with the rise of virtual gifting and tipping will become a very central theme right. for, the next, uh, for the next two years. That's very interesting. What are the kind of companies that you're going to look for? Uh, all of the above sure. <laughs> and, and, and plus plus. So. <laughs> I like the way you put it. So Lani, thank you so much for taking the time out. It was an absolutely phenomenal conversation. I loved every bit of it. 
you know how i want this conversation and uh, to go on i think i think this is becoming cliche right my team is kind of started to hate me for this because you know post every conversation uh, you know this is the, this has become the new sort of a thing right uh, you don't want this conversation to go on right because there's just so much more intelligence right in what you're saying and you clearly are a vantage point right where you are you know you're seeing what's what's going to be defining right i think what we are in is very elementary level of content consumption right what you're possibly looking at is a very different kind of an engaged audience right yeah. uh, and i think i think what will also happen is it will change how we think right and gaming has that potential because it just sort of occupies your mind in a very very different way right and that could you know lead into a very different kind of a consumption environment right uh, and i think like like you kind of mentioned right we have pretty much everything ready right uh, and i think it's just about getting those right uh, you know uh, getting the right fuel right uh, which would just um uh, increase the propensity of consumption right and i think gaming has that potential right so lovely thank you so much for taking the time as a pleasure to have you with us i thoroughly enjoyed this conversation look forward to having you with us much sooner uh thank you so much thank you for having me